Hey, welcome. On this video, we'll be setting up the backend portion of a bookstore. We're going to set up a web API using ASP.NET Core 5.0, and we'll be using MongoDB as our database. I'll be showing you a complete free option to start working with MongoDB in the cloud, and it's super easy to set up. In addition, I'll be showing you how to create and use secrets in .NET for development purposes. This way, sensitive data doesn't end up in the source code. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe, and let's get started. If you don't have Visual Studio downloaded yet and installed, you can visit visualstudio.microsoft.com slash downloads, and you can get the community edition, which is free. If you're following with an old version of .NET, be sure to download the latest. Right now it's 5.0. You can download it at .net.microsoft.com slash download, and most likely you will also have to update Visual Studio, so keep that in mind. We're going to create our web API now, so let's open Visual Studio 2019 and hit create new project. Let's select ASP.NET Core web application, hit next. Let's set bookstore that web API as a name and pick your location and hit create. This window is gonna pop up. Make sure you are in ASP.NET Core 5.0 and you pick ASP.NET Core web API and then hit create. Now that we have the project load up, since we created uh, the project with the little template, let's run it and see what, what's in there. Should take a few seconds. And we can see that 5.0 the template has Swagger by default before like 3.1 didn't have this. So if you've seen some of my previous videos, um, you'll see that I include Swagger. It makes it a lot easier to test your code and document it and whatnot. And Right here, if we click on this thing, there's a weather forecast that comes with the template, and then we can do try it out, execute, and we'll see the response of it. And then we see it's 200, and we see all this data. And this is just dummy data that they have as a template, so we're going to be cleaning this up with our code. So let's close this and let's go back to the code. This weather forecast is one of those template files that got generated. We can just right click on it and delete that. Now let's head over to this controller directory and open that up. As you can see, there's a weather forecast controller and this came with a template as well. And as you can see, there is a HTTP get endpoint. And for now, let's get rid of this and let's get rid of logger. And let's get rid of all this stuff, I'll leave it clean. And now let's rename this file to books controller. Books controller. There you go. And let me say yes and save the file. Right now we have a very simple web API. We just have one controller called books. This is a special syntax for it. We're saying the route is going to be controller. So this is basically the name of the file excluding controller. So it's just going to be books and there's nothing inside of it. So we don't have any endpoints yet. So let's go ahead and create our first endpoint. We're going to create an HTTP get. And this HTTP get will get all the books in our database. So let's go ahead and do, oops, we're gonna do HTTP get, and we'll do public I action result, and we'll say get books. And obviously we can try to access the database in this file and just return all the books. But we want to make the code, the code more modular. And to do that, we have to create a service. So we're going to create a new project. And that is going to be in charge of you know, retrieving all the books from the database and returning that. To do this, let's right click on the solution. And we're going to add a new project. This will be a class library. And let's click Next. And we can do bookstore that core and hit create. Let's rename this class one file to book services. Yes. And then let's add another one. Let's call it iBook services. This will be an interface and hit add. The service will be the one interacting with the database and having the business logic. For example, adding a new book, deleting a book, editing a book, or you know, getting all the books or whatever. 
So next, let's define what is a book. So let's create that class. Let's right click on the project and add a new class. Let's call it just book. And let's make that public. Okay. This class will have different properties. It will have the name of the book, the price, category, and author. In addition, we'll have an ID since this is serving as our model for a database. So let's do that. Let's have a public string ID get set. Let's have a name. Let's have a price. Category. And lastly, author. Okay, there are two attributes we want to add. Let's do ID. This is serves as the ID for our MongoDB. This is specified that this is the primary key. So let's add that. And I did Alt Enter to import that. And let's do representation type that object ID. There you go. And this lets us use it as a string. So let's save that and let's get rid of the stuff that we don't need. And we're done with this file. Let's head over to iBook Services and let's define a we're going to do return a list of sorry a list of books so we do list book and then get books and that's it let's copy this thing let's implement this and we can do alt enter and implement interface so this method is going to return obviously all the books so for now since we don't have the database set up Let's just return some dummy data. So we can do return a new list of book. And we can do a new book here. And we can say um, the name is just going to be like test. And the price um, could be like, I don't know, 12.99. Semicolon here. Save this and let's head over to our controller. So our controller is now ready to call the services. And to do that, let's quickly add a reference to our bookstore.core. So let's right click on the web API. Let's hover over add. Let's go to project reference and click on bookstore.core and click OK. Now that we have the reference, we are ready to call our book services and we need an instance of book services and we will be using dependency injection for this dependency injection will automatically solve our dependencies that way we don't have to do like create a new instance be like new book services and pass whatever we need this gets resolved for us so in our construction let's do an i book services book services and let's import this guy Okay, and then, okay, it's supposed to be an I book services. And okay, it doesn't recognize it because we don't have public yet. So let's do public, save that file. Let's come back. And there you go. You should see it. And right here, we'll do private read only I book services book services. There you go and let's assign that equals to book services all right now we should be able to return an okay and do book services that get books and let's save that there's one more thing we got to do in order for dependency injection to work plus let's, let's go to startup and right here, we're going to do services 
that at transient and we're going to do I book services and book services. Let's import that. And now let's go ahead and try to run it, see what we get. All right, it's up. And right here we see our controller books and we have this endpoint. It said get. So let's try it. Let's try it out and hit execute. And we get a response, which is the object we created earlier with name test and price 1299. Really cool. All right, let's go back to code. Now that we have our first endpoint and we're returning some dummy data, I think it's a good time for us to set up our Mongo database. This way we have everything ready. If you already have a Mongo database, that's perfectly fine. The rest of us are going to follow this free in the cloud option. If you go over to mongodb.com, you can click here and start free or try free. And right here we can sign up for, make sure that this cloud option is selected. And right here we can just uh, sign up for a free account pretty much. And then you're going to follow up the steps. It's pretty easy and you can just set up a cluster for free. They don't ask for a credit card or anything like that. So just follow the steps. If you don't have an account, if you do, then just sign in. Once logged in, you should see a page very similar to this one. And there's five steps right here. And the first one is already scratched out because we already built the cluster. When you sign up, if you log in because you already had an account and um, you, you don't have a cluster yet. You can just click right here and you can create a new cluster. That's the first step. And next let's create a, your first database user. And if you don't see this on your page, you can just click on database access. And right here, we're going to add a new user. So we're going to just do the password and I'm just going to name mine, my first name and last name, and then password. I'm going to click on show. And then I'll do like pass one, two, three. And then we're going to scroll down, make sure we have read and write to any database. And we're going to click add user. Okay. So we finished creating first database user. Next step is to whitelist your IP address. And you can click right here or just click on network access. And we're going to add IP address. And what we can do is allow access from anywhere. We can click this or you can do add current IP address if you want your specific one, which I encourage you to do this one instead. Um, for me, I'm just going to do allow anywhere for now since this is just a demo and I'm going to click confirm. And we can see the status is active. Sometimes it takes a minute or two. So you just be patient with it. We're going to skip loading sample data for now. And next step, next thing after that is just to connect to your cluster. You can click that or just go to clusters and click on connect. And we're going to select the second option, connect your application. Make sure the driver is C sharp slash dot net. And we can just do 2.11 or later and just copy this thing. There you go. This is our connection string. This is all we need. So now we can just close this and go back to our code. All right. So now that we have set up our database, we are ready to cre create some kind of DB client that will return us the collection that we want. We will have a collection name, a database name and a connection string. So we need to set all of these up and instead of hard coded inside the code itself, we're just going to have these as some environment variables. So let's head over to properties and open up launch settings. And right here, we're going to do a comma and we're going to have a database name. And let's call it bookstore DB. All right. And next let's have some kind of uh, collection. So let's call it books collection name. And we can just call it uh, books. And let's copy this thing and have it down here as well. And just save this file. Okay, so now we have the database name and the collection name. So we're missing adding the connection string. And for that, we're going to be using secret manager. This provides a way to just set environment variables, but they will not be showing up in the source code. This way we can just push our code to GitLab, GitHub, whatever, and our connection string won't show up there. It won't show up there. 
And this is because the connection shield will be stored in your computer locally in some file. It's, it's a JSON file, actually. So it's not encrypted. This is not a, uh, you know, a safe uh, way to, you know, to store passwords and whatnot. This is just for development purposes. So keep that in mind. With that said, let's set up our secret. This is pretty easy to do. This is not complicated. There's only two steps. We got to enable the secret storage. And the second step is to set our secret, which in our case is just our connection string. So let's head over to tools and hover over Nougat pa uh, package manager and package manager console. Click on that. And the first step is to enable the secret storage. So let's do .NET user secrets init. Hit enter. And it doesn't know what project I'm talking about. So you can do up arrow minus P, which is minus minus project. And you can do bookstore that web API. Now that we have enabled those secrets, remember to copy this thing back to our code. We're just going to do dot net user secrets. And we're going to do set and we'll do connection string. And we'll paste that in here. And my password was pass one, two, three, pass one, two, three. And the database name was just this guy. So I'm just going to use that. We can click here, package manager console. Let's set the project bookstore that web API. And hit enter. And it successfully saved connection string. Nice. A way to double check this is doing dot net user secrets list minus P bookstore web API. And we can see we have connection string and we have this connection string. Cool. Let's now create a class to map these environment variables. This way we can just use them through our application pretty easily. So let's right click on bookstore.core and hit over add, go over add and hit class. And let's call it bookstore db config. Let's remove all this stuff that we don't need. And let's mark it as public. And let's do three properties. It's going to be string. This would be a database um, underscore name. We get set. We'll have books collection name. Get set. And lastly, we'll have our connection string. This makes this one capital N. So as you can see, database name will have our database name, books collection will have the collections name, and connection string will have just the connection string. And this has the same kind of format as the names that we put here. Capitals didn't really matter, but basically they're going to get mapped. Like whatever value this has, that class will have it. This value is same for the connection string. In order to finish this, we have to go to startup. And right here, we got to do services that configured. And we'll do book store TV config. And we'll pass in configuration. There you go. All right, save that file. Okay, so now we're ready to create some kind of class that will be responsible for creating our Mongo database client. So let's right click on bookstore.core and hover over add, do new item. And first let's create an interface. We can call it IDB client. Let's make it public. And this will have a I Mongo collection book get books co 
collection. There you go. And okay. If you're in Windows, you can do Alt Enter and we can install this package, mongodb.driver. Okay. And now it should be here. There you go. Save that. Now let's create another class. This one we're going to be calling it uh, just db client. All right, let's remove this stuff. Let's make it public. And this class is going to implement idb client. Okay, so this will return the books collection. First, we have to do a little bit of setup before. So we'll have a constructor. This will be db client. And this will take I options. And this is a way to inject the bookstore db config file that we created earlier into this class. So options bookstore db config file. And then I'll do bookstore db config. Let's make sure we install the package Microsoft that extensions that options. All right, and we have this now. And in here we're going to do uh, first we're going to create the client. Then out of that client, we're going to have our get our database. And from the database, we're going to get our collection. So let's do var client equals new Mongo client. And we're going to pass in the bookstore DB config. And then we're going to get the value out of that, that connection string. So now that we have our client, we're going to get the database is equals to client that get database. And we pass in the config that value that database name. And lastly, let's get the collection. So let's create a variable up here. Read only I Mongo collection of type book and I'll just call it books. And I'll say that books is equal to database that get collection type book. And we pass in the config that value that books collection name. Once we have that, this is pretty easy to implement. All we got to do is do return books, or we can do the short syntax and just do little arrow here and just do books. Save that. Now we can head over to startup and register a DB client as a singleton. So let's go over to startup and right here we can do services that at singleton and we can do I DB client DB client. This allows us to inject IDB client using dependency injection, and we'll have only one instance of IDB client through the life of the application. Now that we have our client set up, let's head over to our book services and try to inject DB client. So we'll create a constructor here, book services. And we will inject IDB client. Give it space. Okay. And in here, we can get the the collection. And let's create a variable for it. So we can do private read only I Mongo collection book 
books and let's import this and we can say that books equals to this and now instead of returning this hard-coded list we can do books that find and we're going to get the book and pretty much just going to return true and do a list of that save that and we can even do the simplified version there you go this makes it a little nicer and let's try running our app right now see what happens all right so let's test this let's say try out and we're expecting to get a 200 so that is, is a successful request, but we're not expecting to get any actual data back or anything like that because we haven't even set up a collection yet. So let's hit execute. There you go, we get a 200, it's success, and it's just an empty body. So we can do, we can create a collection and a database by going back to the site and doing manually, but I think it's better if we can just create it in our code. So if we just create a post, and we just create a new book, the database and the collection should be automatically created for us. So let's go back to the code and add that. Okay, so back at the code, we want to create an endpoint to add a new book. So let's go back to our controller. And this will be an HTTP post. An action result, and this will be add book and this will get a book and then we're going to return let's return okay with a book for now but we'll, we'll have to return it to a one since we're creating something new in the database but for now this this works so we can do book services that and then we'll have to add a method here let's call it add book and passing book and let's create this method. So if we go back to the, let's save this real quick. And if we go back to iBook services, we can just create one here, book, add book, and this will be book book. Save that, and if we go back to the implementation, let's implement that method. And we want to do books that insert one and we want to insert that book and we'll return book. There you go. Let's run the app again. All right. So now we have get books and post books. Let's try posting a book. Try out. Let's get rid of this ID since we don't need this. And we'll call this, this is a test, 299, action, me. All right, execute. And we get a 200. This is a response body. We have this ID got created with this name, price, category, and author. And now if we go to books and we retrieve all the stuff in our database, we have the object we just created. Cool. And if we were to go back here, we can close this and go to collections. And now we see that we have a bookstore, DB and books. And this is our result. So basically the DB got automatically created for us and the collection as well. Back at our code, let's create an endpoint to retrieve a book by its ID and update the add book to return a 201 if a book gets uh, added or created instead of returning a 200 as of right now. So let's do an HTTP get site here. We want to get the ID and let's set a name for it. Okay, and then we'll do public I action result get book and we're going to get an ID 
and we're going to be calling book services that get book, which we haven't created yet, but we're about to. And then this will return the book. So we we'll just return OK. So let's go ahead and create this. So if we go to our interface first, we can do book get book and it gets an ID. If we go back here, let's implement the interface. And all we got to do is return books that find where the book that ID equals that ID. And we'll get the first one. Save that. And now this should be able to just return the book by its ID. Let's go back to our controller. And let's fix this adding a book response. So whenever we add a book, we'll have to return a 201 instead of a 200. And to do that, we're going to have a created at route. And we're going to name that route. We're going to we're going to call it get book. And then we'll say this is a new ID equal to book that ID. Space here. Oh, there's an extra space. Let me get rid of that. Here we go. And then at the end, let's just do book. Save that. And now let's try to run it. Okay, let's test this out. So if we click on try it out, this is the one we've been getting. If we copy this ID and we go to get book and we paste that ID in there and execute it, we have a response. Nice. Let's test out creating a new book or adding a new book and make sure that we get it 201 as a response instead of 200. So we can do rich dad, poor dad, 1655. This would be like finance, maybe. And author, let's do Robert T. Kiyosaki. And let's hit execute. And we get it to a one. Sweet. So if we now go to getting all the books, now we have two books. And if we try to get this one by this ID, this one shows up. Pretty cool. Okay, next, let's delete a book. And we can start by this time by the interface, just to mix it up. And then this will be void, delete book, and we'll pass an ID. Implement interface. This will be books that delete one. Book that ID equal the ID. And let's go back to the controller. Let's add an HTTP delete. And we're going to pass in an ID. Delete book. Passing in an ID. And right here we can do book service services that delete book, pass in the ID, and then we can return a no no content. All right, save that. Let's run it. We can try getting all the books to get the ID first. All right, let's do the first one. Go to delete, try it out, pass in the ID, execute. And we got a tool for no content. Sweet. Okay, back at our code, let's implement the last endpoint. This endpoint will be used to update a book. And let's start off with the interface once again. So this will return a book. 
we say update book and we're going to pass in a book back to services let's implement the interface and the first thing we should do is make sure that that book exists so let's call get book is this method we implemented right here and if it doesn't exist this first we'll throw an exception let's pass in book.id so if it does exist let's do a replace the id matches the book.id then replace it with book and return book nice let's head over to controller down here we can do HTTP put we can do public I action result update book and we're gonna pass in a book and then we can just return an okay with book services that update book and we pass in book save that and let's run our API let's hit the get endpoint first just to get the ID and honestly we can just copy the whole object so we can just go to the put try it out paste that in there and say we change this to 899 we hit execute you should see that we get a response with this so now the object the book got updated to 899 say we say say we change this id to 7 which doesn't exist and we hit execute and as you can see we got an exception you can have it return different status codes but for right now this is returning a 500 and with this, we have reached the end of this video. If you found it helpful and you learned something from it, please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Y'all have a great one and I'll see you on the next one.